hello and welcome back to Azure Terraformer. Today we are going to be working with XUnit and writing some unit tests around our service components within our Azure Function solution. In the past few episodes, we've set up dependency injection, we've set up logging using the iLogger interface and application insights. We've also set up custom event tracking using uh, App Insights telemetry client. And today I want to start coding some unit tests around my service component and show you how we can leverage all of this nice dependency injection stuff to write very clean unit tests. So if you're enjoying this series, please smash that like button and consider subscribing to the channel. It really helps out a lot. So without further ado, let's get started. So here's my class, the bulk request processor, and I want to write some tests around it. So I've already got my test project here with a, that really fantastic test that just asserts true. Um, I, want, I want to do something a little bit more sophisticated. Now, I, while my unit tests probably won't get any, any more uh, sophisticated you know, in, the, in this episode, um, I, I do want to, I mean, just because just cause there's no business logic there, um, I, I do want to demonstrate the dependency injection and how that works within unit tests. So a unit test is just a class, and these unit test classes just have these decorators called facts, you can use traits to identify what type of test or you know different aspects of the test to help you do filtering and things like that. Um, but really, there's there's nothing special about a unit test class in XUnit. And so the first thing that I want to do within my unit test class, and typically what I do when I when I first start writing a unit test, I want to construct the object that I want to test. Now this this class looks like I don't even have that dependency there, so I'm going to have to add a project dependency and add my services there. And after that's done, now I should be able to resolve this. Now, constructing this class is a little bit tricky. Why? Because I can't just use an empty constructor because I don't have an empty constructor. Um, because dependency injection uses constructor injection, I've got a whole bunch of crazy constructor parameters that I need to pass in order to construct an instance of this object. So what do I do? Well, when writing unit tests, oftentimes you mock these resources. Uh, but in the case of this kind of middleware like App Insights telemetry configuration and the, my iLogger, uh, maybe there's a better path. So typically what I'll do with loggers is I want the log output uh, not just to disappear or go, or go nowhere. I'd, I'd actually like to see the log output um, in, in the XUnit test, test results panel, right? So in order to do that, I kind of have to Set, set things up such that I can harness the iLogger interface, but channel the log activity to a place where it'll show up in the test results. Now XUnit does have a method for doing that, and it's called the iTestOutputHelper interface. And luckily, I can, I can inject that. Um, the XUnit frame, framework automatically injects that um, interface into my class. So I can call this output, and now I am able to access you know this this uh, interface an instance of this interface um, within within my unit test and output basically you know just right line right so it's it's almost like console like system.console doesn't work in in X unit it won't output to your test results panel um, it outputs to console so if you want to see what's happening within your code within the test results window it's usually a really good idea to use this iTest output helper in order to do your logging. However, um, what the problem is when your code is running in production, you don't want your code to actually have references to the iTest output helper. Um, in fact, you don't even want your, 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 your classes or your code to know about XUnit at all when you're in production. So how do we get around this? We get around this by using dependency injection. So there's a little trick where you can, because I'm using an iLogger, as long as I implement the iLogger interface, I can implement any class that I want and have it output my log information accordingly. So what I can do is I can de declare a class that implements the iLogger interface but instead of outputting it to App Insights or wherever you know it normally goes, I can have it write it to my iTest output helper. And in order to do that, 
um, I need to I need to implement that interface. So the first thing that I'll do right off the bat is I'll implement a new uh, concrete class that implements the iLogger interface. And I'll just call this the XUnit logger. And so the XUnit logger, um, because it needs to implement the um, iLogger interface, I need to take a, param a type parameter of type T. And I'm gonna implement iLogger of type T. And so if I look at this, I'm gonna use Microsoft.extensions.logging, and this is, of course, going to be iDisposable. And because I don't write this from scratch every single time, I'm not going to bore you with those details. I'm just going to go grab my default implementation of this, and I'm going to drop it in here. Um, there's lots of lots of different um, examples of this online, so I would recommend you to go check those out, gra grab a copy, and use it for yourself. All of them usually pretty much look the same. Basically, you know, it's it's a simple machine. You've got this eye test output helper, and you're going to take this uh, base log method, which is the which is an internal method that is going to be used for all of those overloads, like log information, log warning, log error, log exception, whatever. Um, they're ultimately going to hit this method right here, and as long as this method writes to the eye test output helper, we're good. So now that I have this X unit logger within, within my code base, what I can do is in my, is in my unit test, I can declare an I logger of the bulk request processor. And I'm just going to call it the logger. And if we need, we need to uh, fix some references here. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to construct an instance of the logger. Now, normally the I logger is constructed through dependency injection. But in this case, in my unit test, I'm gonna explicitly construct this iLogger using a concrete implementation of my own design, which is called the XUnit logger that we just set up, right? And it's gonna be of type bulk request processor. And I do need to pass in my test I test output helper, because that is part, yeah, that, that is, oh, I need, need to use new. <laughs> um, so yeah, so my, I have a constructor here that takes the eye test output helper and basically that's going to allow me to create an X unit logger. And so now that I have this logger, um, it's fulfilling the interface of I logger bulk request processor. So therefore I can pass it in and satisfy the first configuration requirement. Now the next step is I need to specify tele a telemetry configuration. Now this is a little bit tricky. Um, so ultimately the goal should be to create a telemetry configuration that I can use. And of course my X unit is going to need to know about, you know, the telemetry configuration class. But then the question becomes, well, how do I construct one of these things? And so I can new up a telemetry configuration um, but this thing takes in a bunch of things like an instrumentation key and it takes a telemetry, an I telemetry channel. Now, this is a place where I can, you know, override how telemetry configuration works um, by providing my own, my own version of this. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go create a mock telemetry channel class. And this class is basically going to do exactly what my X unit logger was going to do, except it's basically just going to be a placeholder, right? Um, such that it does nothing. This is, this is a, this is a mock. It's a dummy. It does nothing. And so now that I have that mock or that dummy, um, when I construct a new, when I construct a telemetry configuration class, um, all I need to do is set up my telemetry channel to be that new mock telemetry channel and then set my instrumentation key to be just some random thing. And as long as it's a string, we're happy. And so now I have a telemetry configuration with a telemetry channel and an instrumentation key and therefore I can pass that in and everybody's happy. Um, now again, my tele 
basically this means App Insights is not going to get any of the logs that are happening here. But again, when I'm running a unit test, I, I really, I, I, do, do I need to have observability? Do I need to use App Insights to log these the custom events? I can, I can debug and I can step into this stuff. So it really doesn't matter to be there. Um, so really just having this stuff here um, is a way of shimming or jamming in the normal observability stack without actually integrating with it. Um, so now basically my bulk request processor um, officially has all of the things it needs. It has an iLogger, which is fake, that you know outputs to the X unit iTest output helper. And then it has a telemetry configuration, which we can construct a telemetry client with, but that telemetry client is going to be an empty shell. It's anytime we call tr any of those track event, track availability, track metric, any of those things, anytime telemetry client is used, it's just going to do nothing, which is exactly what we want it to do when we're running our code in a unit test. When we run our code in production, we actually want the telemetry client to go talk to App Insights so that we can see it within the, the App Insights uh, transaction history and the live metrics and all that stuff. But when we're running unit tests, we don't need that stuff at all. Um, so you could think of this almost as like a placebo. You're not taking the actual medicine, you're just taking a glass of water. The unit test won't know the difference. Your, your code running within the unit test won't know the difference. So this can save you a ton of time. And so now when I write my unit test, I can, I can call my method do something async and I can wait for it to happen. And of course that returns an int. We'll just call this my number. And I'm pretty sure I know what my number is gonna be. It should be five. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna assert my number is equal to five. And I need to update my test to be an async operation. And I'm gonna run this test and we're gonna see what happens. And so voila, my test passes. Of course, you know, no surprise there. The, my number will be five because I'm literally record, <laughs> returning a hard-coded five constant. But what's really special is you can see down here in my console output, you can actually see where I'm logging using the iLogger interface. And that's showing up in the console output. Now, again, this is not doing system.console.writeLine. This is doing um, a write line to my iTest output helper. Um, which is why this shows up here. So this uh, is pretty useful uh, because it does make your it, do, it it means that all of the all of the time that you've spent adding logging information to your your code um, is now useful within your unit tests. But it does it in such a way that is is perfectly attuned to the Visual Studio test experience, um, so that you can see that stuff there and and benefit from it. Um, and maybe you don't have to debug um, every, you know, everything because you can go look and see, oh yeah, that's what I was expecting to see. Again, we have done nothing. I have not changed my code at all in order to make this testing work. I'm literally just um, hijacking what my iLogger interface normally should do and redirecting it to the X unit iTest output helper. And then I'm hijacking application insights telemetry configuration so instead of outputting to an actual telemetry channel that's going to hit App Insights out in Azure, um, it's just doing nothing. It's, it's literally a placeholder there. Now, I probably could have mocked this and set, this, set all this stuff up using mock, the MOQ library. Uh, but, you know, sometimes you just implement the interface and if it's a reusable mock that you're going to reuse over and over again, it just makes sense to just, you know, capture it and reuse, it, reuse that class every single time, as opposed to configuring a mock every time. So again, we'll probably get into MOQ or mock or mock i I'm not quite sure how to pronounce it. Uh, let me know in the comments below, um, but it's pretty much the de facto standard for, in terms of .NET unit test frameworks. So um, we're, we'll, we'll get into mock, we'll get into mocking and when we actually build something that's pretty interesting 
within this Azure function. But right now, I'm just kind of getting some of the baseline structure in place so that we have observability, we have dependency injection, we have the ability to um, run our code in production and in unit tests um, such that we can both add features and do it safely by, by infusing built-in quality within our code. So I hope you found this useful. We are still leveraging Terraform to provision our Azure function, but again, we're kind of dropping into code and, and really showing what a life cycle looks like as we iterate on this code. We're leveraging that CI CD pipeline to provision those things out into Azure. We're not touching Terraform at this point. We don't have to. We're not touching GitHub Actions. All of that stuff is in place to enable us to iterate on, on, our, on our actual service code. So if you, if you like where I'm going with this, please smash the like button and consider subscribing to the channel. There's a lot more to come. Uh, I'm really looking forward to kind of demonstrating, you know, some more sophisticated architectures and how we build software for the cloud um, and, and, in, and infuse that and infuse that with a Terraform enabled uh, CI CD pipeline. So that's it for me. This is the Azure Terraformer. Until next time, signing off. Thank you.